to do so, we hope that you'll take time after the service of worship to go to the back of the narthex to our welcome table. We have information about our church, and there are those back there who are more than happy to answer any questions you might have. So we hope you'll take advantage of that opportunity. Today is joining Sunday. It's a special time in the life of the church where we have encouraged people to join, to take that next step of faith, that next level of commitment in the life of our congregation. So if you're interested in doing that today as well, which we've had a very good response in our last two services of worship on this joining Sunday, there is a card in the pew that says becoming a member. We invite you to go ahead and fill out that information at the end of the service of worship. You can come forward, we'll give you the vows, and we'll celebrate you living out your ministry with the rest of us as a part of this faith community. We'll talk more about that later on. But we're certainly thankful all of you are here today. We invite you to turn to the back of your order of service. We want you to be aware of some of the things happening in the life of the church, among many things taking place that we want you to be aware of. By the way, this afternoon at 5 o'clock in Friendship Court, that's just right in the next building to my left, we're having a meeting for anyone who might be interested in attending the legacy of John Wesley trip to England the latter part of September of this year. The McPhails and the Robins will be the ones leading the trip. So if you have an interest, please come at 5 o'clock today in Friendship Court. You'll notice we continue our First Things First series with uh, Climactic Sunday being the 28th of this month. You can read information about that. Please also be aware that the Caring Forever Foundation Banquet is coming up fast approaching on the 23rd. There are still tickets available for that. If you would like to be a part of that, we certainly encourage you to buy tickets and to come. Tom Locke, who is the president of the Texas Methodist Foundation, will be our guest speaker that night. There will also be a seminary scholarship offered to one who is on our staff. So we hope that you'll come and be a part of that event. You also see we have a lunch and learn opportunity and a blood drive fast approaching for which uh, we encourage you to sign up. So all kinds of things taking place, please go online to find out more information or call the church. We'll be happy to provide you with that. We're glad you're here. It's a special day on this Martin Luther King Sunday weekend when we gather together to recognize who we are and what it means to be followers of Jesus Christ. As you're able, please stand for our call to worship. God says to us, come, all you who feel lost, alienated, and alone. Christ, our cornerstone, welcomes all to this house. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. 
Once we had no place to dwell, now we live and abide in Christ's love. Let us affirm our faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus, crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please be seated. have any other little children that would like to come up and join us up here for children's time. We're going to get started. Good morning. How are y'all? Okay. So 
I have a friend and they go to this church and they have a couple of kids and they have some friends and they, their friends, their house flooded. So I think some of y'all had that happen or I know some people who had that happen, right? And it's been a while now and all the bills that they have to pay are starting to mount up. And so their friends got together. I mean, their brothers and the family got together and they said, what can we do to help this family? And they made a list of things they could do to help the family. And one of them was they're having to pay for all their house stuff to be in storage. You ever see those storage places on the highways? That's where they're putting all their stuff. And it costs a lot of money every month. So the boys decided in the family, they said, you know what? What if we moved in our room together, the two brothers, and then we could have them store all their stuff in our extra bedroom until their house is built. And so that's what they're going to do. And so they don't have to pay that one bill anymore. Now, is that taking care of each other? What do you think? Is that a good thing? Yeah, that's a good thing. Now I have another friend and she brought up that when she went to um, this place where moms and dads get to visit kids that maybe aren't, I think it's called a foster place and they may not get to visit their kids, but when they get there, there's nothing in the room, nothing to play with and they're getting to visit their moms and dads. So you know what happened? They've brought a whole bunch of toys and they're giving them to that place so that that empty room now is filled with what? toys so that the moms and dads and the kids can play with toys. Is that a good thing to do? Yes. And I know a bunch of you who have done some wonderful things. That's called taking care of each other, isn't it? Taking care of each other. And that's what we're called to do as a church and as Christians to take care of each other. Who taught us that? Who teaches us that we need to take care of each other? Go ahead, Luke. God and Jesus and the pastors, and who else in your life teaches you that? Uh, well, me. I didn't think about that, but good. You know who else I was thinking of? Your mom and dad. Yeah, there's lots of good church people, and they're teaching us all that we need to. What is that magic word that we're supposed to do when we have stuff? We're supposed to. starts with an S. Share. We're supposed to share, aren't we? We are. And sometimes it's hard. Do you ever have a hard time sharing? Because I do. Sometimes I have to think, okay, I need to think of a way that I can share. And there's all sorts of ways that we can share. And God teaches us over and over and over that we need to take care of each other, no matter who it is. So let's say a little prayer that God helps us share more and more. Will y'all pray with me? Let's pray. Dear God, help each one of us. To find a way to share and take care of each other, just as Jesus taught. Amen. Thank you all very much.
Our first scripture lesson this morning comes to us from the Old Testament, from the book of Psalms, where we hear words of belonging and unity and oneness. Hear these words from Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. It is as if the dew of Hermon was falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This morning, let us prepare our hearts for a time of prayer. Holy and welcoming God, this morning our praise of you is just as specific as the psalmist's praise. In our hearts we name names and places. We think of people and geographies that fill us with gratitude. We especially thank you this day for your church, founded upon your word, a place where we belong, a place that brings life and fullness to us a place that challenges us to do more than sing and pray, but to also go out and work as though the very answer to our prayers depended on us and not just upon you. Help us this day, Lord, to be welcoming, to create space so that all people who would come to you find a place to belong, find a welcome, find a friend. We lift to you in our prayers all those who are lonely, who have not yet found that place. We ask you to help us prepare to receive them and offer them your peace and your companionship. We lift to you all who are sick, who are in the hospitals, all those who are giving care to someone they love, that you would bring healing and wholeness, peace and strength, we offer in our prayers to your tender care those who are grieving and ask that you would surround them with your rest and your comfort. Help us, Lord, to realize that humanity, every person from every country, was created to shine like the stars and live on through all eternity. You remind us, Lord, in our church doctrine that all people are of sacred worth. Heal us, Lord, of our numbness to hateful words and divisive actions. Call us forward into your kingdom to live out and to act upon all that you call us to do, all that you challenge us to be, and to live differently from this world when it matters. Keep us, we pray, in your perfect peace. Help us to walk together until that day when all God's children, black, white, red, brown, yellow, people from our country, people from the nations in Africa, people from Europe, people from all over this blessed world will rejoice in one common band of humanity in the reign of our Lord and of our God, we pray, in the name of Christ, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we reflect this month on what it means to take the next step in our faith, we'd like to all take a moment to receive this testimony from our members Judd and Lindsay Martin. 
We're Judd and Lindsay Martin, and uh, I grew up at Memorial Drive, and we have three kids, um, ages 10, 7, and 4, all boys. Um, crazy household. And I grew up going to church at a Lutheran church in Nebraska. My mom was a parish nurse, and my grandfather was a Lutheran minister, so I've kind of grown up in the church. Giving to the church for me came from an early age. My parents always talked about tithing, and I think as I got a job and started getting a check for a while, it was something that just kind of weighed on me for a while, and then it was, okay, I need to start, you know, being supportive of the church. I feel like it, um, you feel more of a sense of belonging, um, feel like it's your place, your church, um, you know, when you're invested in it. So the more we tend to give, the more we tend to get out of the church. I would say that taking the next step can be anything that you could possibly imagine, from the tiniest amount um, to just starting to get you involved, um, to just going out there and, you know, giving as much as you think you're able to do. Even if you can only give a little, um, it helps you to feel more a part of the church. Yeah, I think giving is a lot like missions. I mean, anytime you go on a mission, or a lot of times that I've been on a mission, I think, oh, this is what I'm going to do for these people. And you typically leave feeling like they taught you more than you really gave them. Giving is so easy now. Um, it, it used to be, you know, put the money in the offering plate or um, mail in a check, and now you can text, you can do it online. It's, it's just so easy. First things first with our kids sometimes that we've taught them um, in learning how to, you know, start giving or, or thinking about tithing when they're older is anytime they're in church, which most of the time they're in Sunday school, but if they are in church, um, whether it's a dollar bill or a five dollar bill, I'm always handing them something so that they understand, hey, it's part of our responsibility as church members and church goers that we got to give back. Houston's been through a tough time. I know it's the difficult times we have, and a lot of us were called and helped without even really knowing. Um, after Harvey, we brought things to the Family Life Center and gave out a number of donations, and maybe that was your first step, and now you're kind of sitting in a, in a place where you kind of are longing to do more for the church, and maybe this is a, a great way to take that next step to really answer that call that maybe you weren't even expecting when Harvey happened. We hope you'll take time today to pick up a First Things First brochure if you haven't already received one and take a look at the giving path that you'll find there in that brochure and continue to prayerfully consider your next step in generosity, in belonging, and in trust with God. Would the ushers please come forward to receive our gifts?
I invite you to remain standing as we read from God's holy word as we continue our series of sermons. First thing first, taking your next step. Today we talk about belonging. So we read about the early church found in the book of Acts. I invite you to hear these holy words. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Before you seated, please take a moment to greet each other in the name of Jesus Christ. say a word of welcome this morning to all of you. We're certainly glad you're here today on this Martin Luther King Jr. holiday weekend. MLK was not a perfect man, but he was a faithful man. He spoke for the voiceless. He did so much good to unite us as a nation when so many continued to try to divide us. It seems in many ways in the, which, in the world in which we live today, there are those who seem to try to divide us all the more. We have means of being able to do that to a much greater degree than we used to. All these forms of communication, everybody with an opinion, a point of view, it starts at the top with our president, it goes all the way down to every single one of us. It's not a political issue. It's an issue of human dignity. And all of us have a responsibility to remind ourselves and to remind the world that as followers of Jesus Christ, we live by a certain standard, we speak by a certain standard. We are the standard because we follow Jesus. So we're grateful for your presence here today, and I hope that sometime on this MLK weekend, you will take time to reflect on the extraordinary man, the extraordinary work, and the extraordinary movement of which he was a part that has impacted positively the lives of all of us. We're thankful for your presence. Today, we're going to talk about belonging. Let's bow our heads. Oh, Lord, in the silence of this moment, prepare our hearts and our minds to hear your word for us this day and work your will in our lives. Amen. C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien were two of the most famous Christian thinkers and influential authors of the 20th century. Early on in their relationship, they established a group of academics who gathered together to hold each other accountable, to critique each other's work. They were called the Inklings. They started meet, meeting in Lewis's office in 1933, where they would support each other and talk about politics. They would hold each other responsible they would criticize one another when necessary. They were a group that gathered together continually for more than 30 years until Lewis's death in 1963. They would leave Lewis's office and they would move to a pub called the Eagle and the Child, where they would continue 
to meet as a community of academics, as Christians, to talk about who they were and the responsibility that accompanied to whom they belonged. They belonged. That's why they gathered together. Because it gave them a group and a place to belong. We all want to belong. We all want to know we matter. We all want to know we have a purpose and a reason for being. We all want to be included. It's so important to belong that in the life of the church, we have created a ritual, a sacrament, to remind us of the importance of what it means to belong. We call it the sacrament of baptism. It is a mark placed on us by God that says we belong, we're included, we matter, we have a purpose, there is a reason we exist. There is an inherent desire on the part of all of us to belong. Nobody wants to be left out, nobody wants to be excluded, nobody wants to be ignored. In the early church, belonging was critically important to this new movement, people who were followers of the way. Before they were called Christians, they were called followers of the way, that is Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the life. And when this new group of people gathered together, they set standards for themselves about what belonging looked like for them as new and faithful followers of this man named Jesus. So they spent time together. They fellowshiped together. They ate together. They learned together. They prayed together. They shared the resources they had together for the greater good, for the cause beyond themselves. And as a result, Scripture tells us in the book of Acts, that there were signs and wonders done as a result. That means, of course, that there was great good, much that was achieved because these people who belonged together found a purpose and a reason for being. They mattered, and they knew that not only did they matter, but what they did mattered as well. See, what's important for us to remember is that when we join the life of the church, In a very significant way, the church says to you who join, you belong to us. And in joining, you say, I belong to the church. It is a mutual relationship that involves all of us. And I am so much better for being a part of the church, and you are too. By the power of the Holy Spirit, when we come together, something extraordinary happens, and I am greater than I could be on my own and you are too. And collectively, that power does so much good for the kingdom of God. Will Willimon put it this way, the church allows us to be more than we could ever be if left to our own devices. I can only achieve so much in my potential and relationship with God by myself, but I can reach the ultimate heights with your help and be who God would have me to be. And you can do the same with my help. So in the life of the church, like every relationship, there are standards and there are expectations and there are responsibilities that accompany all of that. You know as well as I do, in every relationship you have, there is some kind of expectation. And if the expectation is not met, the relationship is in jeopardy. There are always responsibilities that accompany relationships. It's no different in the life of the church. There are expectations that when one unites with the church, she or he takes on the responsibility of being a Christian in all its many forms. So we pray for the church like the early church did. We fellowship together like the early church did. We learn together and listen together like the early church did. That's what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, to take the expectations that are placed on us and live them out as a part of the body of believers we call the church. 
And when we do that, we are so much greater individually and collectively. Jean Vanier said this, we do not discover who we are, we do not reach true humanness in a solitary state. I can't fully discover who I am by myself. I need you. You cannot discover who you fully are by yourself either. You need me. We need each other. And most importantly, we need the God we know in and through Jesus Christ. And when we know that, we begin to find within ourselves this capacity to do things, to achieve things, to think about things that are so grand and wonderful and accomplish them with signs and wonders as a result. Eugene Peterson said, I am not myself by myself. I need you and you need me and we all need to belong. So in the life of the church, like every institution, like every relationship, inherent are certain expectations, certain responsibilities, certain parameters. In the life of the church, in the United Methodist tradition, we give you those parameters when you join the church. We ask you, will you be loyal to Jesus Christ and live out that loyalty through Memorial Drive United Methodist Church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. There are five expectations placed on you. You'll pray for the church. You'll be here regularly. You'll give financially. You'll live out the mission and ministry effort of the church. And you'll tell people about Jesus Christ and this church. The irony is, sometimes when people join the church, they proudly take the vows of the church. Then over time, if we place any of those expectations before them, they, it's off-putting. I've never understood that. How can you stand up in front of people, make a vow, a promise before God and all of them, and then say, you know what? I don't think it's something the church ought to talk about as much as they do. All they seem to talk about is that particular topic. Really? Let me remind you that you took a vow. It's important for us to keep that in mind when we think about the responsibility we have as faithful followers of Jesus Christ. That when we fit into all of those categories and do what we're called to do, we are so much better. The church is so much better. The world is so much better when we all recognize that we belong. I read an article in Christian Century Magazine just a few weeks ago. The University of Michigan did a study on two types of people in the church. On the one hand, they studied people who were regular attenders, whatever that means by definition. Then they studied people who were members of the church, but were nominal attenders. They just went every once in a while. Both groups, members of the church. And they discovered something. People who are regular attenders in the life of the church gave 17 times more on average financially to the church than the nominal attenders. And they determined why. Because regular attenders had more of an emotional, spiritual, financial attachment and social attachment to the church than nominal attenders. In other words, those who were regular attenders felt like the church was such an integral part of their life, they could not imagine what life would be like without the church. So to keep the church going so that their life was what they wanted it to be and they could reach their potential, they supported the church financially 17 times more than the average nominal attender. See, I want to belong. I don't want to be left out. Neither do you. I want to have a place. I want to matter. I want to have a purpose. I don't want to be ignored, nor do you. And in the church, what we remind you is that when you belong to us, we belong to you, and we all belong to God. And as a result of that, you can discover what your potential is and who God would have you to be to a greater degree than you ever could on your own. That's what it means to belong. And so we recognize that it's our responsibility 
to try to include everybody. If you look at Jesus and his ministry, Jesus wanted to belong. I mean, I think it's fascinating if you look at our Lord, God in flesh, as he walked the face of the earth. Even Jesus wanted to belong and was heartbroken when he was excluded. Remember how Jesus was oftentimes rejected by his own people, his own brothers and sisters, if you will, in his tradition. He weeps over Jerusalem. He looks over the city of Jerusalem and he weeps for his own people have rejected him, turned away from him said he didn't matter, that he didn't have a purpose. So Jesus felt like all of us when we don't belong or we're not included or we don't seem to matter. It causes us great pain and sorrow. So in the life of the church, what we always remind ourselves of is that everybody belongs. We don't exclude. There's a woman who's crippled unable to walk. She's had the condition for some time. Jesus reaches out to her, heals her, and then says to her, you are a daughter of Abraham. You know what that means in that culture? You belong. You're a part of the family. Because of her condition, she would have been outside the community, ignored, forgotten, no purpose, worthless. And Jesus made sure she understood she belonged. There is a woman with a flow of blood for 12 years. She is so unclean as a result, she is not to be touched, which means she has gone without the human touch for 12 years. Out of desperation, she works her way into a crowd of people where she doesn't belong, and she touches the hem of the garment of Jesus. And instead of Jesus saying, woman, now you've made me dirty, he says to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. He calls her daughter. What he is saying is you have been excluded. You've been considered dirty. You've been one that didn't matter. You were distanced from everybody else. And I tell you, you belong. You're mine. There is a little girl who is close to death. In fact, there are people grieving for her. Think they think she has died. Jesus reaches out, grabs her by the hand, and says to her, My child, get up. Sickness was something to be avoided, to stay away from. Jesus entered into the midst of all that and calls this sick young girl, My child. That means you're included. You have a place. Join in. Be one with us. So if we follow the teachings of the one we follow, then we recognize in the life of the church, all those things that divide us in the world have no place in the life of the faith community. We know that in the world, skin color divides us, level of income divides us, sexual orientation divides us, level of education divides us, the side of town on which we live divides us. All of those kinds of things and so many other things divide us. In the life of the church, none of those divide us. Everybody is welcome. Everybody has a place. Everybody has a purpose. And everybody matters. So we say to everybody, welcome sons and daughters of God. You're here and we need you and we want you. You belong. You're somebody. See, I need that because sometimes I feel like nobody. Sometimes I feel excluded. You know what that's like. We've all been there. So I need to know all the more that when I gather among people like you, I matter. I have a purpose. I have a reason for being. And you want the same thing. We all need each other. We long to be in the presence of one another because I know I can be so much greater as the John Robbins God made, if I'm with you, then I can do on my own. And the same is true for you. I want to belong. I don't want to be left out. I was serving a church a number of years ago. There was a teenage girl who came to every service of worship on Sunday. In that church, we had three services. She attended every service of worship on Sunday morning. She stayed for the youth Sunday school. 
She also was involved in the youth choir, and then she attended the youth group in the evening. She was there all day on Sunday, and she was also there after school well into the evening on Wednesdays when the church had activities. I found out that this beautiful young teenage girl was walking three miles one way to come to church. I also found out that she was a part of a very dysfunctional, broken family. So much so that oftentimes this teenage girl lived for weeks on end by herself. An abusive family, a neglectful family. She came to the church and spent all day on Sunday there walking three miles each way through busy intersections. I said, well, we've got to do something about this. We've got to help her out. So I went to her and I said, listen, we're going to take care of transportation. That excited her to no end. I said, we'll pick you up in the morning. And we'll bring you home when you want to go home. All you have to do is call. No matter what day of the week it is, if you want to come to the church, we'll make sure you're taken care of. And then I asked her, why in the world would you draw, why in the world would you walk three miles each way each week to come to this church? And she said, preacher, because it's the one place where I can be me, just me. Wow. You mean I can just be me in the church? I don't have to put on a facade? I can belong just as I am? See, in the church, you belong. The way you look, where you live, you belong. And what's even more important is to know that you need to belong. Not just because you need us. But we desperately need you. So in the life of the church, you belong. I want to belong. You want to belong. So let's belong together. Hallelujah. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning in the hymn of invitation is number 572, Pass It On. As we sing this great hymn on this joining Sunday, if you're interested in uniting with our congregation to belong with us as a part of our ministry in what we call Memorial Drive United Methodist Church, we invite you to take that card that says how you can join becoming a member. Put your name on that card. And while we sing the closing hymn, the ministers are going to be down at the front we want you to come down. We want you in a formal way to take those vows of the church, the promise you make to be a part of this faith community, to know the expectations that are placed on you, and to know that as a result, those of us who are trying to live out those same expectations are there for you and you're there for us. So if you choose to do that, we hope today is the day in which you've made that decision. So as we stand to sing our hymn, we invite you to come forward as we sing number 572, Pass It On.
invite you all to take a seat for just a moment while I introduce you to some new, um, <laughs> some new friends. So we have Rod and Charlotte Sovereign, Gloria Iduoko, and Margo and Austin Sacco with their daughter Audrey. All come to join our church by transfer of letter from another church. And we're so glad that they are here this morning. And so I ask you all the same question as you come to transfer your membership. Will you be loyal to Jesus Christ and live that out in your support of this congregation, this church, upholding it with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? And now we all as a congregation have a response for you, welcoming you in and reminding us of our own vows of membership and what it means to belong. Let's join together. We rejoice, we rejoice to, to recognize you as members of Christ's Holy Church, Church and bid you welcome to Memorial Drive United, United Methodist Church. Church. With, With you, we renew our vows to uphold it by our, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. It's so good to welcome new people into the life of this church. And so I invite you all, after we leave this space, all of these new folks, Rod, Charlotte, Gloria, Margot, Austin, and Audrey, will be out in the narthex. And I invite you all to take a minute to greet them and welcome them to our church. Um, I also want to let you all know about some pastoral care things. Um, our affirmation of faith, we said in life, in death, in life beyond death, um, we belong to God and we are not alone. So this week, there are three different services, funeral services, for members who have passed away that we want you all to know about. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock, Bob Shetler's service will be here in the sanctuary. Tuesday at 2, we'll celebrate the life of Richard Stallings. And then Saturday at 1 o'clock, Klaus Schmidt's funeral will be held here in the sanctuary. So we want to share that with you all. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. I want to invite you to stand. And as you're standing, go ahead, if you will. Uh, as you're standing, let me remind you that you have an obligation and responsibility. There is an expectation placed on you to greet our newest members. They will be in the narthex. So when we exit in just a moment, please give us a chance to get back there. That means you don't go out that exit and you don't go out that exit. You go out that exit today. Please take a moment to greet our newest members. They belong to us, and we belong to them, and there's something special about that. So we say to all of you, God bless you. Have a great week. Walk with Jesus, and tell somebody about Memorial Drive, United Methodist Church. Let us sing together.
Yeah, she's in there with it. Apparently she's 